So the question is, is what are DNS registrars and why do they matter? So it's important to understand with how networking technology functions is that theoretically you do not need anybody from the outside world to allow you to build your own network. So if you want to build your own internal network, whether it's in your house or whether it's for a corporation or some kind of military organization or something like that, you can build that out without needing any authorizations from anybody outside of your corporation. So you can set up your own switches, your own routers, your own DNS and DHCP servers, even your own internal websites. And if all you're trying to do is connect your local computers to other local computers and servers, you can do that without any type of outside authority. The issue happens is that when you try to connect your computers and your network to the internet, so this is the network of all of the computers and all the different networks spread throughout the world, you need some type of authority to make sure nobody does anything stupid. So we're talking about things such as allocating IP addresses. So there's only so many IPv4 uh, IP addresses uh, that exist, and so to allocate who gets those IP addresses, you need some type of authority to do that. Also, if you're going to be doing a global DNS, so if you want to deal with domain names, so it's a domain name service, what that does is that associates domain names with IP addresses. So failnormal.com gets associated with a particular IP address. In order to do that on a global scale, you need some type of authority to say what is legitimate and what is not. And that's where something called ICANN comes in. So ICANN is called the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Numbers. They're a nonprofit organization that has overall responsibility for who gets assigned IP addresses and overall how the DNS system works. But they are rather a small nonprofit organization, and for many functions, they don't want to have to actually do the functions themselves. And so they farm out uh, particular uh, components of the, the IP address scheme and the DNS services out to other companies so that these other companies can handle it. This is is where DNS registrars come in. So if you want to have a domain name, you would not go to ICANN itself to purchase a domain name. You would go to a registrar. So a registrar would be somebody like GoDaddy or HostGator or even Google as a registrar, Cloudflare as a registrar. Basically, these are private or public companies uh, that you're able to purchase DNS services through, and then they maintain and make sure uh, that the information that you give them is correct. So there's something called a Whois database. So the Whois database says that when you buy a domain name, you have to give accurate information on how somebody can contact you, give a company name, give an address, give a phone number, that type of thing. So if there's a trademark issue with a domain name, then that is the information on public record so somebody could contact you about your domain name and you could figure out the trademark issues. And so this type of thing is dealt with with the registrars. So whenever you go to buy a domain name, such as failnormal.com or geekfieldnotes.com, you would go to GoDaddy, you would go to HostGator, you would go to possibly Google or one of these other registrars and you would purchase the domain name from them and then they would do the administrative upkeep on the domain name. So when you go in to configure things like the scene name record or the MX record or any of the other DNS records, you would go through their platform to configure that information and then they are then able to tell ICANN what is going on uh, for the overall DNS system. And so this has worked very well and has been very seamless for a long time now. DNS, DNS is kind of like the water of the internet world. You may be able to, to, to buy uh, DNS services from different uh, registrars, but most people never really thought about it a lot. Some registrars are more expensive, so they're able to get the domain names for a specific price, and then they add their own markup on that. So some, some registrars, I think Cloudflare is now selling domain names for the exact price they get it for some other uh registrars tack on a little bit of profit margin on there so they make money off of it. And so some people, when they look at who they go to uh, for registrars, they look at things like what is the price they're selling domain names for? What are the other services? So if you go to Cloudflare and you buy a domain name from Cloudflare because they are a registrar, 
that's more or less all they do. So you got your domain name and you're able to point that domain name to different IP addresses for MX records and C names and that type of thing. But they don't provide hosting services. They don't provide email services. They don't provide the other suites of services uh, that folks may need. So if you're an enterprise company com uh, customer, you're running your own uh Microsoft Exchange server, you're running your own web servers, you're running your, uh, your own infrastructure, then you may go to Cloudflare, buy a DN, uh, domain name from Cloudflare for the minimum price, and then point all the DNS configurations to your own servers, and that may make a lot of sense. On the other hand, if you're a small business client, or if you're just an individual person who wants to have an email address with your own domain name and have a little website, you may go to someplace like GoDaddy or HostGator or someplace else where they may they charge a little bit more uh, for the domain name. They do make a profit off of it, but you can then also, in the same in the same panel, be able to buy hosting services, be able to buy email services, that type of thing. And so basically, that's what we've been looking at for for using DNS registrars. Everybody has their own opinion on who is best. Realistically, most of them are the same. You get you get better customer support. Uh, with some, you get better prices with some, you get different type of DNS services that get kind of specific with others, but with a lot of people, they pick their DNS provider, you know, 20 years ago and they stick with it. They don't think about it. Again, it's much like water. Um, you may be able to buy different types of water, but you just turn on the tap and it just runs and you don't really think about it. Why this is becoming significant now is because these registrars are their own individual company. So it's important to understand with ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, that they're a nonprofit organization uh, that many times gets put under the microscope by governments and countries to make sure that they're doing things uh, legitimately. So there's a lot of questions with how they do things in regards to free speech issues, especially since they're in the United States. And so basically, if ICANN does something weird, the government can come in and bad things can happen. Well, one of the curious things is, is since they are essentially outsourcing the services for doing the DNS registration, these DNS registrars are their own uh, private companies for the most part. If you look at GoDaddy, if you look at Google, if you look at Cloudflare, if you look at HostGator, so on and so forth, these are companies. These are corporations. They're not nonprofits. And so they have their own rules for doing business. And their rules for doing business are usually stipulated in what's called a terms of service. And so a terms of service is essentially an internet type contract where they say, as long as you follow these rules, we will continue to provide services. And again, for the most part, nobody ever really thought too much about it. You know, you figure, you know, you don't, you don't try to try to use your DNS in order to, to pirate Disney movies, you don't use your DNS in order to, to promote Al Qaeda or ISIS. And for the most part, the DNS, uh, DNS question, there really hasn't been a lot of question. Uh, in the past, domain names have been revoked and domain names um, have been uh, forcibly acquired by the government. So you're talking about in law enforcement actions. So if the FBI or if a police department is going after what they consider a criminal organization, they can go to the court uh, to get an order to be able to revoke uh, these domain names or, uh, again, companies going after uh, people who own domain names that are violating intellectual property. So, you know, all, all Disney movies for free dot com pointing to the torrents of Disney movies, Disney would go, they would sue, they would be able to acquire that domain name. And again, there can be some questions from, from the anti-authoritarian folks. Yes, some people out there may say, why, why am I not allowed to own all Disney movies for free.com and that's a that that's an argument that's an argument but i would argue i would say that most people would side with the yeah if we want this whole internet system to work it makes sense that this this type of action can happen what's getting interesting now though is that these private corporations have these terms of services that most of us have never read and never really cared about and now they're starting to use them against people who use their dns services so you may have heard this from the daily story Stormer. So the Daily Stormer was, to be clear, a horrible neo-Nazi, probably still around, horrible neo-Nazi website. I do not support Daily Stormer at all, to be clear. 
basically neo-Nazi website, lots of bad stuff. And so uh, people had tried to deplatform them in the past in many ways, get Twitter accounts revoked, get PayPal accounts revoked, that type of thing. But they were able to stay online as long as they could figure out how to get money from somewhere, uh, whether it's checks or whether it's cash or whatever else, the idea is as long as you have your DNS name, you can point that, that domain name to anything. You can point that domain name to another hosting provider. You can point that domain name literally to a server running in your own basement if, as necessary. Um, Deplatforming something like um, uh, Daily Stormer uh, may, may make the quality of their services inferior but theoretically, they could still stay online. Well, what happened is GoDaddy decided that they violated their hate speech policies, and therefore GoDaddy then said, we will no longer be at your registrar. So theoretically, this is not revoking their domain name, but again, the registrar is what documents all the information that makes the DNS system work. So if your registrar is no longer willing to host your domain name for you, that becomes a problem. And so the idea with a lot of people is that they could then transfer the domain name somewhere else. So if uh, GoDaddy doesn't want to be a registrar, you can transfer that to HostGator, or you could transfer that to any of a thousand different registrars. One of the questions that comes up, though, is if somebody as significant as GoDaddy says, we ref refuse to, to be the registrar for your DNS name, then it's very likely that HostGator will also refuse to be a registrar, and the next person will refuse to be a registrar, and the next person will be, refuse to be a registrar. And so by going after the DNS registrars, this can be a significant way to literally try to take uh, sites, entire organizations, off the internet. We're now seeing that with a company called Gab.com. So Gab.com created an alternative to Twitter. A lot of people say there's a lot of hate speech on there. But that's what also happened with GoDaddy is um, there was recently an attack at a synagogue. The person, uh, before they, they went and attacked the synagogue, they put a lot of nasty stuff on the Gab.com. Now people are stating that Gab.com is facilitating hate speech. So PayPal uh, revoked access to Gab.com. But then not only did PayPal revoke access, but then GoDaddy also stated that they do not want to be the registrar for Gab.com. And now they're being forced to go and find another registrar, which which becomes a very curious issue. What happens when we have ICANN? So ICANN is under the microscope. Again, whether whether or not it has to completely abide by, by free speech and First Amendment may be a little bit of a question mark, but more or less, they have to abide by uh, the rules and, and what's required in the United States. But ICANN, basically what they're doing is they're subcontracting out. They're, they're handing off these services um, to allow other corporations, other companies to provide the services. And those corporations are public for private companies or for profit companies that have their own reasons for doing whatever they're doing. And so they don't have to work under the same rules as I can specifically. And that is where things get to be curious get to be curious. So that's what DNS registrars are really all they are is they're the place that you go to buy your domain name. They collect your information for what's called the Whois database so that if somebody needs to get in touch with you with your domain name for some reason, they have the information to do that. They also allow you to go in and change all the configurations. If you're going to change your MX records. If you're going to be changing what's called your C name records, any of these records, you will go to your registrar to do that. All of that gets synced up with the global DNS servers, domain name system servers, which associate your domain name with the IP address, and that's how it works. Why this is coming up now is to be clear, for decades, this has been a rather seamless, just kind of works. It's like turning on your tap, it's water. Nobody thinks twice about it. And all of a sudden, in the past few years, with what's going on with the free speech debates, this is now becoming an attack vector. And it's a very curious one to think about.